Oh, what a day! What a lovely day! Welcome to Flat Earth Debate. I'm your host, Nathan Oakley, and if you're new to this channel, or you've not done so already, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you would like to support this channel, there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they're live, and a link in the info box below the video once it's rendered. But most importantly, if you would like to join the discussion, simply mute the page you are currently watching, then click the link in the info box below this video to join the panel and express your views on the shape of the earth. If you do join, please don't swear. If you do, you'll be ejected, and if you are, please don't try to rejoin the stream using sock accounts. You'll be warmly welcome back on the next stream. Please also share the show, sharing the the show increases the live audience of course but this in turn increases the chances of a more diverse panel so please please share the show and one last time if you are new to the channel or you've not done so already be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the flat earth debate now we are joined by nummy arwin and isa how are you all doing and hey, what's up brother? fabulous mark still still here mark still here yeah but yeah, did I not say, Mark? Who did I say? Nobody. You, you, you missed me. I missed you. I missed somebody else the other day. I'm really sorry, Mark. We're also See, joined by uh, Mark Doxy. I'm right. Good to have you. Right, we have we have a new guy, Isa, in it at the moment. Yeah, brother. Yeah, I was just uh, just kind of bringing up. Uh, we we're kind of talking a bit offline there about the uh, a plane truth. Uh, one of the one of the, uh, a guy out there. He's got a cool video with a Vatican. Uh, astronomer or maybe uh, someone who used to run one of the observatories and uh, <clears throat> he was remarking how how really scientists don't uh, don't claim to prove anything and he kind of shows and he goes into how science really explains things but the I think the disconnect is that the people the people who read the science and believe what the scientists are saying are not the same as like you know uh the actual scientists like the scientists like most of the i've talked to physicists and stuff like that they openly admit that they aren't really proving things they're explaining things and that like the idea is that there's a disconnect between the general population and what scientists actually do and think i mean because otherwise i mean why would there be such a you know an attack from people that really aren't scientists themselves. You know what I mean? Like, it's not like there's scientists coming in here to debate anyone. These are, you know, most people who come in for any of this are pretty much laymen. But in reality, scientists admit that they just explain things. You know, they're not really proving anything. So for someone to say what a, you know, for someone who's not a scientist to claim what the scientists are saying is the height of, you know, uh, uh, what's a word I could use, Nummy? Um, <laughs> I don't know, like, you know, uh, hubris. Yeah. Or, well, yeah, sure. In your words. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll just say like, it's like, uh, it's like the, the people who go to church arguing about like, you know, like what their priests say, uh, versus like, you know, going to a priest and actually looking at the Bible and reading it with them, you know, whereas, uh, it's like this, there's a bunch of people that think that the scientists are saying something and they're attacking people that are actually entering into the scientific discussion. Cause that's what? all that really this is, is a, if you're willing to forego the conversation and compartmentalize the issue and, and say like compartmentalize the space agencies and just go back to the sciences, you know, that's where, that's where I think this is trying to do. But the, the space agency are providing the scientists with vital data for their project, right? So it's really hard to extricate it. But I wanted to ask you, Issa, do you know where the term layman originates? No, tell me. Well, it was, it's a word that originated as to describe someone who was not uh, part of the clergy, right? You have the okay. priests and the layman. So the word layman was adopted to describe someone who wasn't working with or for the church, right? So just the average churchgoer, that's the layman. So it, it really, uh, it's a very similar relationship between the so-called experts and the so-called layman, right? And remember, we were talking on your show, we were talking about this on your show the other day. And I think that what we, what people really need to need to be reminded of is that this, the 
so the like tenured professors and of academia and the and the science you know the the um certified scientists they don't have an exclusive claim on the term scientist or the scientific method and that, they're priests right well exactly but the thing is, is that anyone who engages in a, a scientific endeavor or a scientific investigation can be legitimately considered to be a scientist i mean this and that sounds ridiculous to most people but if you, you know by by death by the definition of scientist there's no it, there's no nobody can monopolize the scientific method you know and that, and this is we've got to get out of this thinking of thinking of ourselves as laymen because it's it's just really meaningless right like we well no we, but you know what it is it's see stuff. but that's a matter of that's a matter of uh it's called humility it's yeah. like you know but it, uh, it's also an important distinguishment between <coughs> the priesthood of science scientism and just people that are applying actual scientific methods and just knowledge so the, the whole system the itself emphasize emphasizes that the science consensus is basically a priesthood it's yeah. literally encoded in the words uh, isa it's the, it's it's the experts you need to learn about humility not not the so-called layman well no see i don't think it's the experts so much i think it's the people who 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 have television shows who talk about the experts this is the thing i think like we've it's like when like i said like they're just they're just selling right like check, check this out do you know how like quickly hello <sighs> we've lost isa temporarily oh i thought we all got sniped okay oh no no i don't think so isa's just lost his connection but anyways, what I was going to say is that, yeah, I mean, the thing is about science journalism, which is a big part of, you know, the, the, the extreme broken link in the whole chain of understanding science is that they have to sensationalize science because they're selling it. They're selling it as entertainment, right? And so science has actually been, since, particularly since the advent of television, has been led around by the nose by science journalism because it, it becomes part of the funding ecosystem right and you know what what's popular in the popular consciousness of average people ends up having a, a pretty becomes a, a a major attractor in terms of the uh funding scheme right in terms of the uh the way that funds are allocated and and uh, po by popular demand and, you know, what, what will sell and what people can comprehend and things like that. I mean, that's why NASA is a perfect example of that, right? Where it, it's, it was, they realized, you know, this process was already underway and it was just a PR, um, it was just a, a PR thing from the very beginning. They realized that the, the ground was laid for them to, uh, you know, to exorbitate science completely. No pun intended. You guys there? Yeah, I'm listening to you. I completely agree. Oh. Well, that's the, the end of my rant. Excellent rant. <laughs> I used to subscribe to an astronomy magazine and used to get it once a month. And in every issue, there would always be an article that, that would say, it is no longer thought, but now believed. Every item, every issue would have that um, sentence in it. So what, what we believe today, if we are if we're members of the scientism, we will have to correct it this time next year because science, the science press tells us something's different. Yeah, although there is an amazing amount of continuity as well, right? Like like you guys were talking about earlier before I joined, I was listening that why didn't they celebrate Newton's great victory by the confirmation of his orbital mechanics, right? But it was because it was so, it was already so well accepted as fact that Newton was, you know, obviously correct about his whole theory of gravity that it hardly needed to be said that, uh, that they actually had some sort of 
tangible confirmation of uh, his concept. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, by the way, I'd call it a science media outlet. I will. Okay. It's probably a better way to describe it. Science journalism, science coverage, coverage, PR, right? All those things. Media outlet, just okay. pumping out. The... Don't call it those other things, everybody. You got to call no, it. You, you can call it the others, but it, it's basically a media outlet because they just uh, try to write interesting stories or articles or like news flashes about, oh, look. Yeah, it's here's me. what they do, but they don't really cross-reference it at all. It's it's basically just a media outlet pumping out articles, yeah. programming the masses, informing us. Yeah, and training yeah. real us. journalism actually uh, emphasizes some research and checking and stuff. And they well, uh, are you guys familiar with the term entrainment? No. Well, that's you know I think we should replace the word informing with entraining. And uh, that has to do with um, getting, you know, getting us all um, pulling everybody into a paradigm, right? Creating a unified narrative paradigm that we can all conditioning be yeah. a lot more useful. Everybody knows exactly what that means. So. Yeah, aligning all of our perceptions uh, about the fundamental reality that we live in. Just like they've done with the heliocentric model where this, the heliocentric model was able to envelop all religions and belief systems that came before it, for the most part anyways. I mean, maybe there's a few exceptions, but you know, um, the, the Eastern tradition, Hinduism and, and its, uh, and its um, various schools like Buddhism and even Islam, for the most part, have been uh, have been in, enveloped by uh, heliocentric pseudoscience, and so the scientists are they've they've basically uh, relinquished their their own creation myths to uh, the scientist the scientistic paradigm. No, I'm not too sure about that, but they do submit. It's basically, the state upholds the the science, like this is what it really is, and you can still have your religion and your beliefs, but just don't uh, don't go radical against the the Western views, as were. Right. Well, I think that the, the, the heliocentric they, model has made the other religions its its bitches. So to speak. Oh yeah, of course. But it's basically the dis they made a distinguishing line between religions as beliefs and the scientism as reality, the true religion, the religion that doesn't know it's a religion, but yep. is portrayed as the absolute truth. That's the way it's been divided. Yep. Absolute truth, TM. Yeah, I call that a true religion. A true religion is basically a belief that is is shared, is believed in as the absolute, complete reality. No belief involved. It's it's the reality that makes it a true religion. Absolute reality. Reality, quote unquote. Anyway, where's Isa? I maybe he was having some. Uh, I know yesterday he was having some connection issues, so maybe those have. Uh, I, I I get the feeling he is. He didn't mean to drop. That that was not his intent. That something has forced him out. Yeah, when he's running the flat Earth court or Mount Maru or whatever he's calling it currently. He sometimes explains that he has to put his, his um, Apple Mac on top of a bag of peas, like a bag of frozen peas, because it's really <laughs> hot. <laughs> oh, it overheats. You got it. Yeah, my my compute, my new Mac has a solid state hard drive and sure stays real cool. 
Yeah, Anthony's just built Ranty a PC, and obviously as soon as you get a new PC, if anyone's had a PC recently, they'll know you've got to put all your software on it and work out all the creases and niggles and all that kind of stuff. So that's what he's currently, his woes, because you, you have dreams of a new PC, it's all going to be wonderful, everything will work faster and it'll be brilliant, and then you get it and you've got to make it work, <laughs> which is a pain in the ass. Yeah, that's why I do the Mac thing now, because I just can't be bothered to deal with all of the... fine tuning that is required to even get a PC to basically work normally. I love it. But I I always uh, hold over all the, the well working software. So if I'm going to install new hardware, then I'm going to basically not by default trust the software that comes with it, unless it's just the, the basic um, is it the the software that actually installs yeah, what is it? The the drivers, but like all the extra the software, I usually just don't use them, unless otherwise I can't use anything. Because m much of it is just it clogs up your system, actually makes it slower. Yeah. So I'm a, a software minimalist, and it works really well. My computer never overheats. It's completely soundless. It does have vents in it, but it just never needs to spin up. Not even it. If there's like direct sunlight on my computer. So hello, hello. love it. Hey, what's up, man? What's up, man? Nice to have you. Hey Nave. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, be here. So gotta get sniped like three times every time I come on here. But... Yep. Everybody Nave, did. did you get my did you get my email? I did, I replied with my Skype info. You just obviously haven't picked it up yet, but just after the show, just pick it up then. Right. Hey, plain truth. If, uh, cho I... if chocolate can get in, I can get in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just downloaded Skype the other day, so I'm still learning it. So, give me a few. <laughs> I'm, I'm still actually learning Hangouts, too, so this is all new to me. Yeah, this stuff fun usual. But I like you guys. This is cool. <laughs> this is cool. This is a wonderful little niche in this great chaotic scene of the internet. Yeah. Oh, a little island of, be of wonder and, and uh, learning. And it's good to get these uh these thoughts out because sometimes I have I have these very same conversations in my head, my own head, <laughs> you know. So sometimes mm -hmm. you can't just talk to anybody, random people on the street about some of this stuff. Yeah, well, and it's definitely important to have a have some capacity somewhere to release some of that pressure that we build up from conversations that have happened exclusively in one's own head. Right. You know, we need to, human beings need to express themselves freely. It's a very healthy thing. I don't know. Even well, if I don't we're... really get the, I don't really get the sniping and the trolls and all that, but I guess that's just, a, that's just people in a different mind state. Those people who are having their fundamental beliefs challenged and it makes them very angry, makes them very upset. They don't, they... Why, but why do they allow that to control their emotions like that? I don't... Well, I think that's... cognitive dissonance, something like that, you know. I don't know, it's just yeah. one guy here mostly and I think it's more like a power trip for him. I think he's beyond caring. And he's just here to feel powerful for disrupting things. He's just a genuine asshole. Oh, it sounds like a pretty pathetic individual, really. Oh, he is. Chris is, definitely. Hello, Alan. Hey, Alan. Hello, boys. How are you? Hi, nice to Hi Alan. Alan. Bonjour, garçon, Nathan. Ça va bien, merci et vous? Ah. French, are we? <laughs> oh, when that was terrible. <laughs> yeah, I can only do the Hollywood French accent. Say my, say my name in French, Arwen. 
Alan B. Alan. Alan B. Just me, Alan B. So, what nonsense are we talking today? We were waiting for you to give us something to talk about. We were talking about how people like yourself are very, re, you know, resentful and angry that uh, other people would have a conversation that would challenge your uh, fundamental beliefs. Well, that's quite interesting with somebody with a voice like 200 grit sandpaper. But, uh, I believe you're wrong. Does my voice sound like 200 grit sandpaper? Thank you. That's no. a quite a compliment. Thank you. Not at all. It's more like 300 grit. It's like very fine. Oh, a fine grain equivalency. To... You can't really compare a voice to sandpaper now, can you? <laughs> I know. That's Alan, right? Calling the kettle black. <laughs> yeah. Your personality is like broken glass glued to a piece of paper. Uh, boring. Well, start us off, Alan. What, what's your opinion on evolution and creation? And ancient aliens. I, I always imagine Alan is one of those people who are having like tea and crumpets whenever he's talking to us. So really? Voice. Tea and, <laughs> tea and hobnobs. Hey, Ranty. Hobnobs. Hello. Ranty's here with some evidence. Hey, Ranty. He's right. sitting, really, Alan B is sitting in some, in, in a cubicle in a, in a uh, military base. In Toronto? In Toronto, yeah. <laughs> like putting on that accent, right? He's just here as he's like the the hall monitor for the uh, the sacro conversation. Were you bullied as a child? No. Um, I wasn't small enough to be bullied. Probably would have been bullied if I had been if I had been smaller. Are you lanky then? Anyway, Got a lot of background noise. Pretty... Can you guys mute if you're not talking? I don't really put up with bullying, you know. Like I, I've always, I always was the kind of kid who would defend other kids from bullies. Good for I you. Don't, I don't like bullying. Good for you. Hey Pete, hey, is that Andy? really you? But you were probably a bully, right, Alan B? No, not at all. Mm. I was the nerd. I think you still are a little. Hey, Pete. Nerds. Well, I mean, I don't. I wouldn't pay him that kind of compliment personally. I think he's just probably more of the brown nosing teacher's pet. Thinks he's a nerd, but really he's just a. No, nah, he's has his nose per firmly planted in the sphincter of uh, his professor at all times. Don't get disgusting, I mean, no, but I don't think he's the type for that. He's more like the, the smart ass guy. He's getting old, you know. I, I don't know. I don't know. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah. If we can have one more person from the audience join by clicking the link, it'll stop this troll infestation. Oh, they're coming for you. We're all the hills. Yeah. The question is, how old are the hills? That's a good question. How old yeah, but. Hey, but Alan, I kind of wanted to, wanted to ask, do you, what do you think about evolution and it's concept quite an of creation quite an and ancient aliens? What are your quite thoughts on that? What an interesting topic, are we? Yeah, we started out uh, about that. You said so, we, were, you, we were related to worms. No, I said with uh, the genetics are well, we, very we do much have a tubular similar. Body. We do have a tubular body. No. No, it's, it's, I was just referring to genetics. That's it. Genetic similarity. Well, I believe in evolution. There's too much evidence. Like what? What do you mean? Well, there's like one. What? <laughs> like what? <laughs> there's too much evidence. What do you mean, evidence? What do you mean? What do you mean? Love it. There's a very, there's a very key piece of evidence missing from the evolution story, Alan B, which is the abiogenesis event in 
you know, there, it's, there's no evidence whatsoever, and, or there's not even a, a, a theoretical explanation for, for the uh, event that would have initially created life from non-biological dead matter, right? Well, so, I'm surprised big with, all, with all your knowledge, you wasn't there to witness it. And neither were you. But anyway, they tried. They tried. Uh, I know. I followed this stuff. They tried to actually create uh, life from inanimate uh, matter, in including using electricity. Never really worked. Never really worked out. But uh, that's not necessarily even what evolution is about. Evolution is mainly the big question is, can one species transform into another species? That's the big question. Right, well, you see, I'm, Alan, I'm, I'm among this camp of people who I, I don't personally think that there's, I think that it's not ruled out exactly. It's just that there's no evidence to support it strongly, right? But I don't think that uh, I'm not anti-evolution. That's your position that... on everything. Everything is wrong, but you've got nothing. It is interesting how we share so many characteristics with apes and pigs, especially. So, I mean, you know, we have to, once you come to flat earth, uh, if you're not going to take the creationist route, uh, you have to sort of come up with some sort of idea uh, about our yeah, We share characteristics with all animals. We share yeah. characteristics with a lot of birds as well. And I study birds a lot here yeah. in the roof. And yeah. they're very social and they actually do farming. Yeah, when I they get to... bread, they take the bread and then they put it in holes, yeah. they leave it there, and then later they go hunt for bugs in those holes. So right. they farm. All animals are much more intelligent than we overall give them credit for, uh, especially yeah. the one that have social relations with each other. Yeah. And they're also the interaction between one species and the other are very specific. Well, well, I mean, one I mean, time, like a, a black bird will react very differently to a, a pigeon as to a, a smaller bird or a, a what do you call them uh, a seagull. Yeah. They I went to all the know their differences and they have very different attitudes towards all the other birds. So it's it's much more complex than yeah. you tend to see. And I went to the... a bit of scientism arrogance to assume that humans are the most complicated, the most conscious. The... Okay, Arwen, here's the big question for you. Hmm? Do you think animals have consciousness? Yeah. Absolutely. Yes, I do. You think they're think all self-aware? I think it's humans that lack consciousness. Not... Yeah, no, it's... That's a big... Self-conscious... Uh, Every animal... Up to a certain degree. It is like they have... How do you say they can't really uh, elaborate on it they can't really build on their identity but they have a an awareness of their own presence as it were but it's just something they don't deal with a lot because they don't need to they're not burdened they're not distracted uh, just as how do you say usually it's usually due to trauma or to interruption uh, from the outside that makes you develop uh, introvertly, that makes you develop, uh, yeah, like alternative intelligent roots, as it were. And animals have the same type of response as well. So traumatized, traumatized creatures develop very differently from non-traumatized creatures. And well, I think all, all, to creatures humans. Are, all creatures are traumatized in various ways. I mean, trauma is just, you know, it's kind of like, building the immune system of the psychology. Yeah, yeah it, it kind of is. But, like, uh, but, you're, no, but you're traumas, trauma. with real trauma, I mean like a uh, extreme situations that you're socially not capable of handling. Right, like, so like being, being, being captured, being trapped, yes. or being mortally threatened. That's oh, things that creatures are not built to, to deal with usually. And neither are humans, by the way. Interestingly enough, you've just described Scientology. How so? You actually. I will. <laughs> That's one of their beliefs, isn't it? The um, engrams. Huh. Well, they might have got something right. You know, usually mm. most religions tend to get a few things right, at least. Vinu, Vinu time. Yeah. Alan B, were you a Scientologist? Uh, we got Vilu. Remember? Are you are you a, are you a recovering Scientologist, LMB? No, I'm very much against them. 
You're against them. Mm. Why? They're a cult. So what do you do? You, do you <laughs> anything to be against? Do you take? Do you make any effort to combat their their uh, belief system? Yes, I've been quite disruptive in one of their centers in Leeds. Well, congratulations. Thank you very much. What did your decision so, achieve? Is science exactly? a cult, Alan? Isn't um, you know the whole foundation of Western society and its whole belief system? Isn't that a cult? It's all about belief. There's no proof. No, it's evidence. Mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not belief or faith based. What's your proof of R then, Alan? So the R value used in the mathematics when presupposing. Oh, don't worry, a sphere. Nathan. Nathan, stop. I'll just go and put my feet on the fire. Yeah, well, that's the fundamental basis of your religion. So, yeah. telling me to not stop when I ask you to prove it's the fundamental basis religion. of your religion and then you just talk over me. Yeah, mm. prove not R. Yes, R for religion, R for religion. radius, my friend. Yeah, it has, it has millions of children earthwide been indoctrinated on a daily basis into the cult, the belief system, Alan, without any, uh, any substantial or any proof at all of it. Right? This is why we're here. So. Uh, there's plenty of leads, observations, ideas, but there's little verifiable proof. Mm. So, well, Alan, lots of fair. disproof, evidence against it as well. That is not Alan, the best proof. You just ignore it anyway and say it was wrong. So, well, what, what is your proof of father? I don't think so. Exactly no, 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 it's just that you've got really good evidence. Let him tell us. Let him tell us. What's your proof of R then? That's the fundamental basis of the religion. What's your proof of it? You're not seeing the pictures from NASA? That's not <laughs> proof of R. You have a laugh. Yes, you're pretty much a Scientologist, Alan. You're a zealot. I think so. So you're just going to show me the idol and tell me that's the proof? Well, you've got nothing to show me, so... Uh, it does, I'm not asking go. for you, me to be shown anything, right? We're saying that but there's a, a cult. Of, uh, flat you're saying you've gone pictures, on, hold on, Alwyn. You're saying you've gone on cause disruption at a Scientology cult. Now we're asking for proof of your religion. You have none. Have you caused much disruption in the heliocentric cult, Alan? It's not a religion. Not a religion. Yeah, it's got a value of R. And I keep asking you, what's your proof of this value? And all you've done is say, have a look at my idol. That's your answer. Yep. Well, that's because you're in a religious cult and you don't even realise it. You're like those retards in the Scientology <laughs> cult, aren't you, Alan? Just another retard who doesn't even realise he's part of a cult. What an idiot. Yeah. That's what a true religion does. Yeah, yeah. true believer doesn't even know project. he's believing. You're just projecting me. No, not at all. Why are you so angry all the time? Because you've told us there's proof of your cult, <laughs> and I've asked you for it, and you don't have any. You've just told me to go and have a look at the idol. It's pathetic. Cult that you are in. The same reason in. you're angry at Scientologists, Alan B. Um, that was, that was fun. They have as much proof for their, uh, their alien spirits... Uh, <laughs> Descending on the Earth through their spaceships and uh, making people's lives miserable. They have just as much proof. Alan B, can you look at my screen for a moment? Nathan, you might want to share this. You looking at my screen, Alan B? Ah, it's Planet America. <laughs> Is this a real photo? Can't see anything. Click on Nummy locally in the Hangout. Uh, just the skulls. Oh, look at oh, that. Look at how nonsense and ridiculous that is. I mean, well, I don't course, know. Of course, real. Yeah, beautiful, isn't it? So you think North America is uh, accurately represented on this uh, photo? Uh, I think you'll find the camera was just a bit closer as it was going past. Really? So why is it then shaped into a bowl like mm. that? Yeah, Alan, you're part of a cult. You don't realize it. No, he, he realizes that that's why he won't show his face, right? He realizes it well enough. Because if you think you, you're you're claiming, you know, look at the NASA pictures. Well, I'm looking at the NASA picture, and it's absolutely the most absurd, preposterous, and silly thing that I've ever seen. And uh, it's disproportionate. That's uh, yeah, a little disproportionate, right? It's Planet America, sure. but so Alan, we say you say the proof of R. This is the proof of R. Yep. Actually, no, me, do you see? I just All right, well, I'm okay. glad that you signed off on that because I think that this is a um, proof that you are yourself an indoctrinated cult member. Uh, Nomi, can you put up that picture again, please? I just noticed okay. something uh, amazing. Have you seen a dodo, Pete? Yeah, I think Hold on. While, while you're doing that, can someone else get a picture of Xenu up just to show him proof of Xenu? 
Okay, I'm sharing that screen again, Pete. Okay, uh, I'm just looking for something myself, but this we're thing, gonna get this thing. Screen analysis here. It's gonna be awesome. No, no, no. I'm just, I'm just, I just noticed this for the first time. Of course, this is a ridiculous uh representation but I, as i think myself these are all clues for us but i just noticed something you see where let's lo locate florida there and you move yeah. a little bit to the left can you see the eye you see what looks like an eye yeah just right can you can you move your mouse over move it to the left and up towards the middle lands up a bit keep going keep going keep going keep going keep going bit to the left again bit to the left there circle that that's an eye so yeah exactly so, so zoom out a small bit and <laughs> Hang on, can you see it now? It looks, you might say, it looks like an eye, right? If you zoom out even a bit more, it'll be clearer. Yeah, now can you see it? It's in yeah, the I, see, I see it looks like a crocodile face right here. See that? Yeah. There's I'm the gonna, neck. I'm, I'm going to share my eye. Yeah, excellent. I'm going to share my screen in a second, Nathan. That, gonna... there's, a, there's clearly a crocodile in these clouds. It's the reptilian agenda. <laughs> They're showing it in photo. Okay, uh, I'm going to share my screen in a second and wait and see. Wait and see where this uh, this same eye uh, can also be located. Hopefully now I can just find this. Yeah, here we go. Um, Nathan, if you wouldn't mind, let me just. Sh it's just for the benefit now. of Alan. There's some proof of proof of Bilu. It's just on screen on our wind's page. Oh, yeah, that's, hold on. that's proof right there. Yeah, I'll get back to it. Uh, <laughs> proof of Alan, Bilu. you honestly there's, think there's that proof that's of a Zinu. Real picture of the Earth? Got proof of, proof of Zenu on screen. That's pretty good too, Arwin. Excellent proof. Thank you for that. This is Zenu. Proof. Yep. Uh, Nathan, if you wouldn't mind. They kind of look mind. the same, don't they? Yeah, okay. You Sorry, oh, that's a Maybe it's the same one. Dude, that's Maybe the Earth has come back. That's but picture. The Earth has come back. This is amazing. If you wouldn't mind sharing my screen, Nathan. Yeah, go ahead. Just for a moment. Yeah, you're That'd on, Pete. Can you see it? Yep. Hang on. Hang on, can you see my screen on paint? So on the left here, right, we have a located near uh, uh, Crater Copernicus on the moon. Can you see the same eye shape here? It's pretty clear. There's no mistake in it. And also, this is what, this comparison here I've made. Uh, on the right here is uh, a Crater Aristarchus, as can be seen on the moon. And we also have the same sort of pattern. So I just noticed that there, uh, Nami, in the picture that's presented to us from NASA. So these are amazing coincidences or else there's something else going on and uh, Pete, going Pete, on. i know i know i know i just Pete, sorry but okay, let's that just looks it absolutely that. nothing alike sorry alan no, no, let's not argue about that Pete made it he showed what he wanted to show let's not we don't have to dwell on it no i'm just being honest it's very it's observant nothing alike. sorry right? but alan i want to ask you i want to ask you alan so no. why do you think that north america is so disproportionately large <laughs> Oh, he's gone silent. He's thinking. Alan, you're mute. Oh, what's up, boys? Okay, Alan, I wanted to ask you, why do you think that, uh, what, do you, what do you think is the explanation as to why North America is so disproportionately large in the Blue Marble 2012 photo? Because the camera was closer as it was passing by. What do you mean by that? Can you explain, please? I don't even know what that means. What do you mean you don't know what it means? You don't know what being closer and more distant from an object? <laughs> Alan, the, the whole the, planet. So, uh, how could it be? How could the Earth be so small then? So, you're saying that if you move closer, that the Earth ball it. will become smaller? That's logical, it's not, it's right? Not, it's it, it's not it, it zooms in. in. It's done in many passes. It's a composite. Oh, okay. But how is it then proof of R? How does it prove it's a ball if it's just a composite? How is that proof? Because some yeah. the size of the continents are known. So if you do many passes, somehow the continents are going to be disproportionately large? It depends on the orbit. Right, the closer you are. It's very convoluted, Alan. No, That's it's not. No, this is, this is just desperation, Alan. This is a really well, desperate thing. The thing is, Nomi, you, you don't know either. All you've got is everything's wrong. And you no, no, fair enough, we'll entertain it, Alan. No, no, hold on, hold on, guys, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's just ask Alan a couple more questions. So, fair enough, we'll entertain this. What's an orbit? What do you think an orbit is? You tell me. You tell me. I don't know, you're the one who said it's in orbit. So, what do you mean? Well, it's going around the planet. Is this something you've experienced, this going around the planet oh, business? here we go. I've never been to Tesco either, Nathan. Do they exist? 
So have you been around the planet to validate this orbit thing you're talking about? Have you been to China? Yes. Have you been to Japan? Uh, sorry, yes, I have been to China. So have you been in to orbit, Japan? Alan? No. Oh, right. So how do you know orbits exist? Because I know China exists. I've been there. You don't know Japan exists, though. I've been all over the world, Alan. You try and pick a country I've not been to. Let's see how quick this game lasts. I've been there, Can mate. I jump in real quick? Because uh, No, no. Let's just get to the not... end of this. Alan, I have been to places <laughs> around the world. Now I want to know if you've been in orbit. And the answer is no. And you're just going to keep asking me where I've been and experienced. Is that the game here? Nathan. No, 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 no Alan. You haven't been in, 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 in orbit, have you, dickhead? <laughs> oh, you're so, so why rude. are you saying about orbits? None of us have experienced... Anybody on the panel experienced orbit? Hands up. Used to be oh, a, yeah. Used to be a brilliant nightclub in Leeds. Not you, Alan. We've already heard your answer, mate. Let's just hear the silence for a few seconds. I was has anybody in, in the, Has in anybody on the panel... Don't answer any other question. Has anybody been in orbit? Yeah. No. Who's I saying have. yes? In my dream. Other than in dreams, in reality, no. <laughs> has anybody been in orbit? Who can confirm really this no. orbit thing? I love you. That would be a no. No, nope. my physical body has never been in the orbit of us. All right. We've got a bit of a problem here, Alan. China definitely exists. Orbits, on the other hand, none of us seem to have been in orbit. Who, who, where have you got this information from, Alan? Uh, I'm not playing. Where have you got the information from? You've asserted orbits and you've not been in them, neither of us. So we just want to know where you're getting this idea from, this fairy tale. Where's it come from? I'm bored of this argument. This is your cult. You're bored of fighting for your cult. I wonder how the Scientologists feel when you go and kick off a stink around them. Do they get bored with you? Do you get bored with yourself? Let's look out some of the... Yeah, they must be saying, hey, stop attacking our cult, you know? Why don't you criticize your own cult? They were, they were yeah, too busy criticize your own cult, Alan. Alan. They were too busy programs of um, their leader. Alan, you're trying to, you're defending this absolutely absurd picture, so, you know. What have you got? Where's your, where's your flat picture? Where's the edge? What have how, you are we gonna, how are we going to get a flat picture when we can't? Leave the uh, back to try one, did you? And there is no edge, and I think that Rent is showing something interesting. Get, get Arwen to take a camera up in his dreams. Oh, yeah, but unfortunately, pictures taken in dreams don't actually appear in, in physical reality. That's that would that would be something, but the thing is, Arwen lives in a different dimension, right? So, no, 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 everybody lives in a different dimension. I right, just Arwen remember. hasn't presented on mainstream TV and in schools that his dream is a reality. However, we do in the Western world have people like yourself, Alan, asserting that this picture of a ball is where we live with absolutely sod all proof of the radius, of going into orbit, all sorts of other cultish fantasies that people assert, including our own governments. Yeah. So, is it reasonable to no, assert the same standard upon Arwen, who isn't telling the world that they live on a sphere? Or should we hold the people who have this information presented to the masses at nausea, held accountable for their nonsense, Alan. Like you're holding the Scientologists accountable, apparently. The least comparisons I make, right, there's something there to it. So I'm just going by my visuals and seeing some, uh, you know, connections here. Even if they're right or wrong, there's still some... Uh, indication there's no indication for as you say or there's no indication we live in a sphere there's no indication of movement but alan here uh will come back again and again uh professing the same uh faith like, from a from a height right so what are you going to do yeah look at this government paid picture this is my proof right here same people who are <laughs> telling us all of the mechanics that go along with this ball i'm going to use their example of the ball as proof of the ball wonderful yeah. proof just use the propaganda I think Alan is privy to a greater story somehow. And look, the way I look upon this, NASA could have done a much greater, better job. They have unlimited funds, so why didn't they? There's something else going on. And as I say, I think it's a greater puzzle that's there for us to be solved. I think all of this stuff by nature is easy for us. Um, that's what I meant to ask uh, 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 Arwen earlier on, or anyone else. I think our bodies are avatar, you know. 
uh, a mix of genetic material and that we just sort of step into at birth and leave at death and go back to our true uh, our true natures or true essences do you reckon i can't wait you can't wait know me well i mean you have an eternity afterwards right so yeah well i don't think we have to wait very long anymore anyway in my reckoning and i know it sounds crazy but what isn't crazy these days this earth realm of ours is 420 years old this year this is what the dodo has come to represent for me and uh, I don't find, I know, yeah, I know, I know. And look, there's a big connection between 420 and the dodo. There's a big connection with cannabis and the dodo as well. Again, I don't want to go into that. But well, I know Pete, about listen it. to this. Canada rhymes with cannabis, right? And we just legalized marijuana in the country this year on the 420th year. Boom. Well, I mean, listen, look Canada, into it. Canada, okay. this. Canada this. Well, look into uh, look into how 420 got its name. Right, and with cannabis. Hang on, Alan. Look into uh, how it got its name, uh, 420, and associated with cannabis. There, within the the story, you have the raphus species, right? The dodo is said to be of the raphus species. So all of these things are connected. Uh, you know, again, I know it sounds ridiculous, but as far as I'm concerned, Alan is the most ridiculous man on here. Alan yeah, absolutely true. is. He represents mainstream truth. He represents truth. He represents the same truth that young children will represent and laugh at me. Alan B. represents the status quo. And, and, I've, and I already said this. I said it's unusual and uh, surprising, as many of your ideas are, they don't hold a candle to the absurdity of the... No me, no me. Quo birth religion cult that Alan so zealously defends like a brainwashed tool. Nick, Nick. Nick. All day long. Nick. Mr. Status Quo. Nick. 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 I am the frequency of truth. Yes, well, frequently, your truth is frequently a brainwashed propaganda myth. He knows everything. That's why dog is God backwards. He lives in the eternal present. So, I mean, yeah, we have to rethink everything. And you might think my ideas are absurd, um, Nami, but or I don't, I know you don't mean in that sense, but everything I've come to realize, um, I know has been laid. I'm not sort of bringing anything into existence for my own self. I'm just uncovering things that have been uh, uh, laid over. And um, that's the way I look at it. No, I say all the power to you, Pete. I'm not. I'm, I didn't say it was absurd. I said it was unusual. And, unusual, yeah. I apologize. Yeah. Okay, and and you know what? The truth is, no matter what the truth really is, it's absurd, bizarre. Yeah, absolutely. Every any story, the the yeah. truth of the situation is that it's a bizarre situation, regardless. Of what Can I show you what I caught today? Oh, definitely. <laughs> okay. Let me know when I'm uh, I'm displaying. You How you doing, Ranty, by the way? Hi, Pete. Ranty, nice yeah. to see you, to you in here. You too, man. You're getting some great stuff here. I mean, this is indisputable, right? Yes, I have to agree. Your, your recent uh, uh, footage is absolutely spectacular. Thank you very much. Well, I've been pushing the boundaries out again today to see just how low I can get. The tripod to the right is set at about a foot and a quarter. And I'm actually standing up, holding it at sort of like chest height at the minute camera. So I'm showing you this rock to the side of it. And uh, when I get down, I'm going to place my camera on this rock. <laughs> so um, the tripod height, I say, is like I say, is probably around about 16 inches. So it's my estimate, because you can see where the water is, the incoming tide here. It's about probably three inches, would you say? Close enough. Above the water at that time? Yeah, close enough. Mm -hmm. Seems close enough, I should imagine, yeah. But here's the intro. There's two interesting parts to this, because I took um, a video of it now, um, and I also take a couple of still images afterwards, but the tide actually comes in, and I mean, my feet were absolutely soaking. I'll show you a bit jumping in the, in the water in a minute. But the images are very interesting. The, the video, there's me setting it down on the rock. And I'm going to zoom in. But if you look at this, if you look at the tide coming in, right, these waves are higher than three inches for sure. So how come we're looking up to see the buildings over here in Barrow? Because there's the tide coming in. 
these heights are these these waves are probably about five or six inches high the camera's only at three four inches so how come we're having to look up to see these buildings well, probably the slope of the shore is actually putting your elevation slightly higher than the waves right because you're out of the water well i'm not out of the water for long trust me um what i'll do is i'll just just fast forward it to the end of the video because straight after i pull away from here um you'll see that my feet are completely submerged in the in the, the incoming tide there we go you see me splashing around in a sec there i'm jumping around in it yeah the tide's fully in now it's submerged everything um so the two images there's one image that i took straight after which was this one oh where's it gone gotta still figure out how to use this one this was the first one and this the was buildings. the next one so it's almost being obscured by the wave there well yeah if you look at this here in the video i do get a, a couple of uh frames where i do see the lighthouse and it appears and disappears behind this um this air layer this darker area, area here is the air layer that's mimicking the, the water underneath but still you can actually see the the camera is having to look up to see these buildings now you've just seen that the, my feet were in the water so i was clearly only about three inches um, above the water when i was taking these images so unless these waves were two inches then we have to be looking up at these buildings which goes completely against what the, the ball predicts which is everything starts falling away straight away yeah. yeah you can only be looking up at it if you're on a flat plane and they are physically higher than your position which they obviously are they're above the shoreline nice nice work That's awesome Rock solid evidence definitely and uh, obviously these buildings shouldn't be seen from this distance i'll just reiterate that none of this should be seen at all i think the curvature calcs is about 215 feet something ridiculous it should be hidden from the, like five five inches or something this so. is the third time you've done this the third time you've caught this stuff from this elevation from zero essentially zero <laughs> feet yeah on the water but what was interesting today is we had this this murky layer you know uh, the other two times that i've captured it this this dark area wasn't evident in the in the video or the images but today it was and it's just the air it's literally air mimicking uh, the water underneath it's kind of reflecting it but yeah great stuff again Excellent. I think the very best time to catch a picture like this, Randy, I'm just thinking is at the exact point of change of tide. So just uh, uh, after reaching its highest point and it's about to ebb again, and obviously you're looking for a very calm, a calm setting as well. But again, this is uh, just as more uh, proof. It's, it's deadly proof. Alan has no argument against this. None of the ball earthers have an argument against this. And yeah, well, it just confirms what we've already known for the last however many years we've been looking into this. The earth is flat and stationary. Um, there's no two ways about it. Um, I just noticed something as well. We explained this pattern. It looked for something very familiar to me. Uh, again, I'm on my own pathway here. If you can just share my screen briefly, Nathan, if you don't mind, let me do it myself. Um, I've been talking about Aristarchus expressing. So we're in, we're under the system and I've been looking at wave patterns uh, within the sands, desert sands. And here we have this pattern that's very similar to the pattern we see on the beach there with, with Ranting. So none of this is arbitrary. We are, um, yeah, we are living in a system where we have energies expressing and uh, these are the patterns that are associated with the energies. So that's just something um, uh, that occurred to me again. So, yeah, excellent stuff, yeah. Frankie. It's I well known. I could have swore we covered this last time you were on, Pete, but you're, arise everywhere. Every, everything you're looking at is all fractal patterns. You know, you, every time you yeah. show something like this, you're, you're, you're showing the obvious fractal nature of the world, and it is everywhere, in everything, always. You know, that's yeah. that's just the nature of the world. I mean, it's good but that you're know, spotting this stuff, yeah. but... But Nathan, now uh, we've identif I've identified the source, which is Aristarchus. I mean, it sounds ridiculous to people, but when we look at the moon, we're looking at a reflection, right? It's, it, there's no solidity to it, but it is a reflection of solidity. The only crater is Aristarchus, and even though it looks, uh, it look it, when we look at the moon, every, it looks like there's a myriad of different craters. We're looking at the same crater being fractally expressed. So yeah, uh, that's 
these are all provable as well. You can go out in the clouds, you can see these patterns being expressed in the clouds. Now you can see it in the sands of the desert, the sands of the beach, you can see it everywhere. So uh, that would take a lot of uh, expanding upon. But, um, and I know it sounds crazy, but listen, I'm already crazy in pretty much everyone's eyes anyway, and that's fine. Yeah. Hey, have you uh, photoshopped <laughs> yep. compared the craters yet on the moon? Yes, yes, Rand, uh, Arwen, I've done all this. You see, the thing is, I'm not one for putting out short videos. When I do Hangouts, I'm uh, involved in my own investigation here. This is about me figuring out what the heck is going on. So I've proven all of this stuff to myself. Before I realized Aristarchus was the source of everything, I compared crater Tycho and crater Copernicus and a few other craters. And when you do this intimate examination, you see that in spite of appearances, they're exactly the same, just viewed from a different angle. And uh, that's where I was stuck in the Tyson or Tycho. And this is where I think Neil deGrasse Tyson is named as well. Uh, Neil deGrasse Tycho's son, right? But then um, I realized that they're all expressions of the one and only creator, creator, this is the, the, the word play, uh, which is Aristarchus, which is emanating from what you might call the North Center. Where I'm at now, Flat Earth doesn't matter. Flat Earth is just a sort of stepping stone in terms of this greater realization. And all of these things are known as well. Stanley Kubrick knew it when he placed uh, the monolith, which was found by the eight moon watchers. So your clue is to look at the moon. Once you can understand what's going on with the moon, then you can uh, put the pieces together. But yeah, the monolith was found by the eight moon watcher in a crater. And when you compare crater Aristarchus to uh, the crater the monolith was found, you find the match, right? What? No, I know, no. one left and listen, the Statue of Liberty, look at Liberty Island, if you look at Liberty Island, this is what uh, it represents, we have, uh, I know we don't have time here, I know we're going to the, the, the Statue of Liberty is an iron cast uh, statue, it's, it's what it represents, it's, it's what it represents, you know the flame uh, at the top of Liberty, the flame is to be yeah, seen, but you said they found a monolith, what monolith, oh I'm talking about the movie 2001 A Space Odyssey, oh yeah, yeah, I saw that recently, yeah, yeah. The, the black uh, slab right they founded it within a crater right? so the the ape the really moon. who did where when the ape moon no that's in the movie in the movie yeah. all right all right well symbolism well, yeah you, yeah what i'm saying to you is is danny kubrick knew obviously he's an insider he knew and he decided to place the the monolith within uh well, Crater Aristarchus, when you do the comparison, they're, they're a match, you know. So these things are known, as I say, uh, Statue of Liberty on Liberty Island. This is representative of Aristarchus and its neighboring crater, uh, Herodotus and Prince, right? So, but again, they're all, every crater is yeah, one. Yeah, a bit of stretch. I know, it sounds strange. I don't want to go into too much. Yeah, no, that's fine. By the way, uh, talking about 2001 Space Odyssey, I saw the movie, movie recently, was very impressed by the practical work, it's not CGI, it's mm -hmm. basically practical camera trickery, very, very impressive work. And I also th thought about the whole monolith thing and like uh, the latter scene where he basically, uh, what is it? He approaches it and then he goes into this hallucination type mm -hmm. scenario. And I was thinking the whole expression of that vision that he had uh, it was obvious that it was suggested to me that the monolith, uh, the creators are thereof, also the spooky sounds that you constantly hear when you approach it, that they are portrayed as an extra dimensional entity or a set of beings. And the whole interaction with himself, seeing his older versions, then becoming them, seeing it again, typically is a fascination of the extra dimensionals, which are not bound by time with mortality right. so just wanted to put in and that by the way i yeah. i highly recommend uh reading the book if you haven't read it and listening to it dick hill is a fantastic reader and i was really impressed i don't normally like sci-fi reading but it was really good the, the book was developed uh, concurrently with the movie and our uh, stanley kubrick held back from arthur c clark isn't it funny that aristarchus is an anagram of c arthur as is None of these things are coincidence, <laughs> right? But uh, let me say monolith. Monolith is uh, one stone, right? Einstein is one stone. Uh, one stone, stone breaks down uh, to S tone. Yeah, right? but on the other hand, the whole monolith in the uh, Space Odysseys is not really a monolith because monolith is usually a pillar, a square pillar. And this is rather, and this is also very symbolic, a door. It's yeah. door shaped very distinctly. It's flat. Uh, rectangle, hey, rectangular. 
So <laughs> it's rather a door. And right. The door is a protection. Probably sim symbolically meant as a black door, a, a door into the other dimension. Well, um, with 9-11, 2001 A Space Odyssey, right? on a 9-11, when all the buildings were destroyed, one building remained upright, and that was the Millennium Hotel. And when seen across the Hudson, uh, it, for all the world, represented the monolith. If anyone doesn't know about this, just type in the Millennium Hotel uh, 9-11. So again, this is a greater story being told. And of course, we, we all know about the crater that was left after all the buildings were destroyed in 9-11. And you had two towers, unberthed, and in their place, one unified whole. This is all about us, again, our divided state, uh, reunifying. And that's the way I see it. It's all representative. Oh, uh, in a wondrous realm completely and uh, far away from the determin deterministic uh, scientific explanation for throughout the universe. And everything. Well, as far as I'm concerned, uh, if you look... And with that, I'm going to say first and foremost, a huge, massive, enormous thank you to all of the debating panel for making this debate possible. If you hated the show, you know what to do. But if you liked it, consider sharing it. Maybe subscribe if you've not done so already. I've been Nathan Oakley, and I will see you all in the next video. Oh, what a day! What a lovely day!